welcome once again to our show, and this is Frank Cavalier, host. Uh, thank you for watching. I'm do interviewing our guest with my co-host, Don Ritchie, uh, to my left. Thank you for being on our show, Don, and thank you for interviewing, uh, co-hosting with me. And then Diane Delayden. Diane Delayden, running Del in the 40th Leiden. Ward. Correct. Running in the 40th Ward, so it's easy to remember if you just break it up in three syllables, right? Delayden. That's right. And um, longtime resident of the 40th Ward, mm -hmm. uh, active. Now, um, I know we talked a little bit about before the show, but just tell us a little bit about who you are. What's your five-minute biography? I'm a long-term ward resident. I've been in the ward 32 years, own a home, and I raised my son there. And during those 32 years, uh, I've done many things in the neighborhood. I've been a community activist through the neighborhood organizations, WANT, West Andersonville Neighbors Together, and our local parish. I've sat on school boards, started after-school clubs, started a farmer's market, sat on the finance committee. I have also been a social worker and a community organizer during those, those years. My college degree is originally in social work, and I spent years as a community organizer, uh, weeding through a maze of block grants and state and federal and local grants and reading contracts for nonprofit organizations. Uh, that led me to sitting on the w Illinois Women's Agenda, which back in the early 1980s was a board of women's social justice organizations. On that board were women like uh, Dawn Clark Netch and Jan Schakowsky. And that women's board was formed at, for the purpose of channeling resources and shaping legislation and funding in our state for women and children and families. It was a very wonderful experience for me that had a lasting impression. I later went into office furniture sales and um, needed to do so because I needed to support my family and uh, went to school at night and got a master's in education and I'm now a CPS teacher. Math and science and I read contracts and I know numbers. Okay, uh, and where is the 40th Ward? The 40th Ward is an area, almost a complete rectangle with Rose Hill Cemetery in the middle. On the east side, we are start on the west side of Clark Street and we go all the way to the river. On the south side, we're bordered by Lawrence and in some areas, Foster or right below Foster. And on the north, basically Devon slash Peterson area. Well, what's your westernmost border again? It's the Chicago River and in some areas, Kedzie. Okay. So, and, and it's moved, it's, it's, it's changed over the years of what the 40th Ward was. Is that correct? We've been remapped like many other wards. Uh, currently, we um, just experienced another remap that's taking place, uh, taking effect for this election. In February, many people who were formerly in the 47th Ward will now be voting in the 40th Ward. And we've been heavily canvassing that area, and we know they want a progressive alderman representative. Now, you just mentioned that uh, you said that the people in your ward want a progressive alderman representative. Do you feel that, that the incumbent alderman, and who is the incumbent alderman in your, in your ward right I'm now? running for the 40th Ward. Mm -hmm. against Pat O'Connor, mm -hmm. who's been in city council mm -hmm. since 1983, that's mm -hmm. 32 years, and he's been unopposed for the last 20 at least of those years. Mm -hmm. And he's not progressive, he doesn't fit the ward anymore. The 40th ward has gotten more expensive, mm -hmm. more progressive, and younger in the mm -hmm. last 20 years. Mm -hmm. They want a progressive alderman and we want somebody who we can hold accountable. Mm -hmm. Pat O'Connor has voted a 100% record with the mayor, mm -hmm. and that's not the kind of representation we feel our ward needs. When you say progressive, what do you, what do you mean by that? I mean, what would you do, what would you do different from what Pat O'Connor has done, and how do you dis what do you disagree with him in terms of uh, uh, how things should be run? I won't say what I disagree with. What I will say is what I would do. Mm -hmm. If I'm elected to city council, which I fully expect to be elected, uh, I would do some things different in city hall. I would represent mm -hmm. the ward. And I, we have smart people in the 40th ward. Why not ask them mm -hmm. how they feel about issues and funding? I would also try to bring CHA, CT, CTA, and CPS into council oversight. I think that's the only way voters are going to have accountability. We can hold our aldermen directly accountable for things like schools, housing, mm -hmm. and transportation 
if we have that oversight. Those are things that working families and everyone in the 40th Ward cares about. Okay. Now what's your reason for running? Why, why are you running for Alderman in the 40th Ward? I'm running for Alderman in the 40th Ward because I've lived there a long time and I can't sit it out anymore. Between things like the crushing debt under which we're living right now in Chicago, uh, for instance, we've racked up another $1.1 billion in debt just last year alone. This is a bill we're passing on to our children and our families for the future. We're mortgaging their future. I'm a, a teacher and I'm a parent. And it's hard for me to look at these children in the eyes knowing that we're already borrowing money to pay our own debt. I don't know how they're going to deal with any issues with that kind of debt. Furthermore, I think we need school reform. We need an elected school board. We have to fully fund our public schools. And I don't think the city's doing a good job of that either. I just can't sit it out anymore. Okay. What do you think you bring to the table that's unique? Uh, why you and not somebody else? So you're right. I think you're 100% right. Everything, so many things are wrong with Chicago right now. And probably your ward in particular. Although, you know, obviously there's citywide problems and mm -hmm. there's particular problems. But what are you bringing to the table that's unique? Why not just support someone else? I love the city and I love my ward and I want to participate 100% in making Chicago as good as it can be. It's very important to me and all the people in the 40th Ward that we continue to thrive in a city that we love. We need more resident friendly, more Chicago and friendly policy in Chicago. We need to stop the rampant privatization that's allowing corporations to reap obscene profits with using public money or at the expense of voters and taxpayers. We're feed and fined to death between things like the red light cameras, the parking meters, speed cameras, etc. Not to mention janitorial services in our schools are now outsourced. We're losing jobs, we have lower paying jobs, and we're losing work, working opportunities while the corporations are getting rich. That's a huge issue and all Chicagoans need to deal with that issue. And again, schools, we have to have fully funded neighborhood schools in every neighborhood in the city. That's not just a word issue. Although our school, our beloved Trumbull School closed, it was just rehabbed. The board put several million dollars into it a few years ago. It's a shiny gem <coughs> and it's closed now. I understand how that feels to a neighborhood. It really breaks a neighborhood's heart to have to bust your children somewhere else for a public school education. These are all, na all neighborhoods, all citizens are concerned with these issues. Um, now, I think as Frank may have mentioned already, um, I'm with a group called Citizens Taking Action, okay. CTA. We <laughs> campaign for the protection and improvement of public transportation here in Chicago. Um, what, what issues do you see, what problems do you see with public transportation in the 40th Ward, and, and, and as Alderman, what would you do to, uh, to correct those problems? We have a few ward-specific issues. Uh, the neighborhood schools is a citywide issue. Uh, what I'll talk about at this point is the Lincoln Avenue corridor north of Lawrence Avenue. Uh, it's becoming desolate. I would use TIF money to support local businesses and neighborhood organizations and community organizations to get up and get running in many of those empty office spaces. This would be a good use of TIF money in a TIF district in an area that needs it, instead of funneling money to connected corporate real estate developers. I really want local businesses and local families to have a chance. And that would include continuing the, Lawrence, uh, the Lincoln Avenue bus. There seems to be gaps in the service and nobody really knows why, but they don't run the bus down Lincoln Avenue anymore north towards Peterson. That's a huge hit for the business community. In addition to that, the parking meters, they're expensive. We could perhaps rig some kind of moratorium on paid parking on some streets using public monies to help those businesses stay open. The mm. bus is a big issue, though. Yeah. Public transportation is a vital part of any business mm -hmm. district in the city. Yeah. Now, my understanding is that the Lincoln Ave that there used to be a single bus on Lincoln Avenue that ran from 
I guess the whole, almost the I whole think length so, of Lincoln the whole Avenue. Length, yes, yes. Yeah. And and at one time, in other words, from Lincoln Park all, like, at least clear up to Lincolnwood. And now, mm -hmm. my understanding is that there's an interruption. There's a part of Lincoln Avenue, I think, in your ward, that does not have any link any bus running on Lincoln Avenue. So the bus is down to the south mm -hmm. at. Or, you know, around Lincoln Park to Paul University and, and a little north of there. And then I, I guess there's a bus further north of, of where you are, mm -hmm. but, but nothing in between. Is that, is that correct? That is correct. And the Lincoln Square area, which is not in our ward, which is Lincoln and Western, basically, has full bus service. Yes. We don't know. It seems to come a little bit above Lawrence Avenue. We don't know why it was changed. Uh, in addition to that, the Ashland Avenue bus also stops and picks up again later on. It does not really come through our ward. There really is a lack of public transportation in our ward. Hmm. Now that's... Um, there are no L yeah, stops. Yeah, no L... There's no Metro stop. Oh, no L stops, no Metro stop. Correct. Yes. On a previous map, the 40th Ward did have the... I, I thought they did, used to, the, the L stop on um, Foster around Kedzie, around North, North uh, Park College. Um, so that's a, that's a previous map, I think. You know? That could be. That could be. I don't think it's in our ward now. Well, what's disturbing is the incumbent, obviously, is allied with the mayor, uh, powerful politicians, as people say. Why would there not be more public transportation? I don't know who's opposed to it or who stopped it. I can only tell you that since we've been with the same alderman for 30 years, there must be some knowledge of what and why and when uh, in that office. And I, I don't know what it is, but I know that the business district north of Lawrence Avenue really needs to be revitalized. And we have to help it. What's your vision for the 40th Ward? So let's say you were elected. After four years, where do you see it? After four years, I see more small business. I see things like um, Edgewater Medical Center, which is another local ward issue, which has been standing empty and decaying for 13 years. Uh, that neighborhood has been asking for it to be torn down for 13 years, and those cries have been ignored by the aldermen completely. Uh, the building is dangerous, full of asbestos, and falling apart. The children can't even play close to the building. It's scaffolded. Uh, it's dangerous and it's ignored. I see that turned into some kind of public space and some perhaps single family homes. I'm not a developer. I can tell you the land needs to be changed, but I, the neighborhood's been asking for some public use on that property. In addition to that, um, we need a voice in city council. I see participatory government, governance, governance in our future, excuse me. Uh, we have really smart people in the 40th Ward. Why not ask them or the neighborhood organizations what they want to do with certain plots of land or with the bus issue or with government grants that we can possibly secure or TIF money? We need neighborhood organization participation. We need the ward, the people in the ward who want to participate, who want to be progressive, to be asked. We have empowered people in our ward, and we have people who need empowerment. I really envision a ward where we're all working together. And on a citywide level, I'll give everyone a fair shake. But I will have accountability to my ward. Okay. Um, we usually do this at the end of the show, but I want to do it twice for you okay. here. Thank Could you. you please tell our viewing audience where your physical w office is, via physical campaign office, the address, your phone number, your website, uh, any other information how people can contact you, either to ask you questions, comment, criticize, or if they want to support you? Okay, I appreciate that opportunity. We've just rented uh, space. We haven't signed the lease yet. It is in that Lincoln Avenue corridor that's kind of desolate. So I won't give the address just yet until the lease is signed. But we are dianeforward40.com. We're also having a fundraiser this weekend uh, at Hamburger Mary's Attic on Clark Street. And we have a very local, well-known folk singer coming, Matt Farmer. And you can find that information on our website as well. Our, web, our phone number is 872-210-9261. And um, I answer my emails personally. I am Diane at dianeforward40.com. Thank okay. you. 
That's very good. So if I'm a 40th Ward resident, why, why should I vote for you? I will represent the 40th Ward as it is today. I will represent the people in the Ward. I promise to work night and day to earn your trust. We right now um, have a gap in leadership because our current alderman is really not very visible in the ward. I go to neighborhood organizations, I always have. I'm not just doing it because it's an election year. The other issues, and I, I want to say I'm a CTU member, I have to say I'm going to fight for pensions. I'm going to fight for no redu reduction in the pension amounts, and I promise to fight with teachers for a fair contract. Pensions, when we talk about pensions, we're talking about retirement security for families, for people who've given, in some cases, their entire working life to public service, police, firemen, teachers, city workers. We're talking about people who gave that, and through no fault of their own, their pensions have been spent or reallocated in other ways. Uh, it's a contract we have to keep. And if my ward is interested in keeping that contract fairly, that's another reason they should vote for me. We are not going to take that money off the backs of the workers through more property taxes or we already have the highest sales tax and gas tax in the country. We are not going to go back to those workers. We're going to find new sources of revenue and our ward wants somebody who's going to find new sources of revenue. I, I will also say we need police protection, we need to fight crime. Fighting crime often means taking poverty on head on at every level. And we have to do that in this, this city. We need a minimum wage and not a dribble up to $13 minimum wage. We need $15 now and that's for corporations maybe $50 million and over who can afford it. And I want to see small businesses who need time to ramp up have a graduated scale. That's another way that I hope to help the Lincoln Avenue Corridor. Our ward has a wonderful history and wonderful people, and we need to really listen to that and serve that. Now, you said that we need to find new sources of revenue. Um, what, what do you mean by that? What, what, sort of, what, source, what sort of sources of new revenue do you think we should be uh, looking at? Or, or well, uh, the pension debt is now part of our overwhelming debt. Mm -hmm. Uh, it originally wasn't paid into because we had budget priority problems, not funding problems. So my suggestion is, first of all, we need some public debate on some of the issues that have been brought up. Karen Lewis of the Teachers Union was a proponent of the transaction tax on electronic transactions on LaSalle Street trading firms. Mm -hmm. That would raise a billion dollars in a short amount of time. And that would be pennies or less per trade and it would replace the pension money in a short amount of time. We also need a public debate on a fair tax. Many other states, I think 40 other states have a fair tax system. If you make more, you pay more. We could also debate other things like having some of the companies downtown that have gotten huge tax breaks to be in Chicago to start paying taxes or graduate level into paying taxes. We need to collect money. There's money laying around that we're not going after because we're focused on corporate development and not on citizen development. Now, by fair tax, do you mean a progressive income tax for the state of Illinois? Or are you talking about having a, like, a, is there a municipal income tax? Or what, what do you mean by that? I would say either or both. I think the, the opportunity for debate needs to be taken. Uh, yes, we need a fair tax in Illinois. And I think we could use something on a citywide level too for corporations especially who already are not paying their fair share. Mm. But the public's never asked. And we don't have accountability through our elected officials if they have jobs for life with no opponents. Do you believe, are you in favor of an elected school board and for more trend? Elected school board is a main part of my platform. Nothing will change unless that changes. We won't grow. We must have people who know education, teachers, principals, parents, students, community members running our schools. We cannot have corporations running our schools. In addition to the elected school board, which my campaign helped get on the ballot in the 40th Ward, several organizations joined in with us and we will be voting on that in the 40th in February. We have to cut testing. 
Standardized testing is sucking the creativity out of education. In the last three months of this school year, and I'm talking right now current, there's only two or three weeks in the school year where children are not being tested. Mm -hmm. That's springtime. That's the best time of the school year. There's not going to be much room for creativity or art or music or anything else if we're testing constantly. Schools have to be fully funded and an elected school board has to be accountable to the voters. Do you believe in that we need more transparency in, in the government in general uh, here in Chicago? I mean, would, for example, would you support more transparency in the, in the CTA? I would support more transparency in all government agencies. Amea Pawar recently suggested some type of independent budget office, and I would join with him in city council to push for that. We need somebody who's independent of politics and we need a fully funded budget office with real teeth, not rubber teeth. We need some, <laughs> or I was gonna say rubber stamp. We need somebody who's really gonna read every budget line before these aldermen who don't read it vote. And the taxpayers need to know. Sh would any of us in this room voted for a 75 year lease on our parking meters? I don't, a doubt I don't think I would have. <laughs> no. Without a doubt. Right. Not so that long. If you were elected, what would be the first thing you did? The first thing I would do is lead the fight for an elected school board. That's another contract with our democracy that we need to maintain. We cannot outsource children to corporations. We must have citizen control over the schools. We must have accountability and we must have fully funded neighborhood public schools in every neighborhood, even if the mayor doesn't think it's convenient. We must service democracy in all corners of our city. Did the incumbent do anything to keep Trumbull School open? No. And our, our incumbent did very little from what I can tell. Uh, the neighborhood organizations clamored about it and asked for hearings and uh, I did testify at two different board hearings and um, I understand he may have testified at one. We didn't see him there. But I, I think it all happened so quickly and the same day it was announced that Trumbull was closing, um, Pat O'Connor announced that they were going to open a charter school a few blocks away. So it seemed like the handwriting was on the wall. Our neighborhood organizations were very upset about not being consulted about that. That charter school didn't go through, by the way. We rallied, pushed back. That building is not standing empty any longer. It's going to be Half Acre Brewery. So we are having some other things move into the ward. Okay. Now, when Trumbull School closed down, did you lose, um, well, obviously you lost a school, and obviously mm -hmm. you lost the community interest. But is there any other schools that are filling the void? Even, obviously not for that charter school, but any other schools? Well, Trumbull School specialized in working with children with special needs, which is a challenging part of our occupation, for which people are very specially trained. And kids with special needs were bused in from all over. There's a big void there. So some of the neighborhoods who went to Trumbull are now at Chappelle, that's our welcoming school. But you should know, a taxpayer should know, our public schools in our ward just this year lost two and a half million dollars in funding. So that welcoming school where they promised all kinds of special things lost $94,000 this school year alone. The screws are tightening on public schools. And we cannot teach oversized classrooms. In one classroom alone, once uh, when I taught on the southwest side, I had 43 kids in a science lab. Wonderful children but they didn't even have stools to sit on. We didn't have enough science supplies. I would be a liar if I told you I was teaching to the best of my ability under those circumstances, and I think that's what's happening downtown. There's no way children deserve overfilled classes. All right, We're all, we only have a couple minutes okay. left. So one more time for our viewing audience, can you give, again, I know you said you're not in your physical address yet, but your website, your phone number, any contact information if people have questions for you okay. or they want to support you or, or even have some comments or criticism. Thank you very much. I'm Diane Leiden. I'm running for Alderman in Ward 40. Our election is February 24th. This is the time to act now. Tell your friends, tell your family. There will be no runoff. There's only two of us in the race. So this is the time to get active. 
at dianeforward40.com. You'll find all the information you need about us. And I answer my email personally. I am diane at dianeforward40.com. And my phone number is 872-210-9261. Uh, you can donate on that site. You can read all our issues. You can sign up for a fabulous folk singer family event this Saturday at Hamburger Mary's. And you can see what I'm all about. I want to thank my viewing audience for watching. And I want to thank uh, Don Ritchie for being my co-host. And I want to thank all our technical staff, uh, Tony, Pops, Freddie, and of course the iconic William Godomsky. I want to dedicate this show and all of our 2015 shows to Randall Sherman of Blessed Memory, who is the founder of the Illinois Committee for Honest Government and one of the pioneers here at Can TV. I want to thank you everyone at the Can TV staff and employees of, and volunteers and staff and employees of Can TV, as this is an incredible avenue for people to communicate and get a message out from the community and from voices that aren't heard. Thank you for watching, goodbye, and God bless you. <laughs>